everyone, my name is Tashiana and welcome to E3 Church and a happy graduation Sunday. Why don't you comment down below and say hello to the people in the comments, the people you know and the people you don't know. And also feel free to take a picture with you and your family watching this live stream using our hashtag E3 Church. Right after this, we're going to head straight into the countdown, followed by praise and worship and a message from my dad, Pastor Lasulo. There'll also be a surprise for the class of 2020, so stick around for that and let's head into that countdown. Psalm 103 verses 1 to 2 says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. This morning, as we join together to worship the Lord, we just want to celebrate the goodness of God as we go before him in prayer. Father, we thank you for all the blessings that you have bestowed upon us. Thank you that you are our Father. Thank you that you are always there for us. We celebrate your works in our lives and all the wonderful things that you have done. You have given us life. You have given us opportunities to work. You have given us opportunities to be in relationships. Lord, we give you praise. We celebrate you today. And we ask you that as we worship you, help us to worship you in spirit and in truth. Be glorified this morning as we celebrate you. In Jesus' wonderful name, we have prayed. Amen and amen. Let's worship the Lord together.
on behalf of the EP Church family, we want to say congrats to the class of 2020. We did it. Yeah. 
the ashes. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for, to be overcome by your presence, Lord. Lord, your presence, Lord, your presence, Lord. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. We love your presence, God. Holy Spirit, we wait here for you. We wait here for you. Fill us with your love so we can make a difference. Mm. Your presence, Lord. Your presence, Lord. Your presence, Lord. Your presence, your presence, Lord. Your presence, your presence. Your presence Lord. Mm. You are welcome your here. Presence. You are welcome in our lives. You are welcome in our world. You were welcome in our lives. You were welcome. You were welcome. Your presence makes a difference. We welcome you, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We bless you, Lord. Hallelujah. We wait for you, Holy Ghost. We wait for you. We wait for you. We wait for you. To walk in the room. We wait for you. We 
wait for you to walk in the room. Here we are, standing in your presence. Here we are, standing in your presence. Shekinah glory come down. Shekinah glory come down. Here we are, standing in your presence. Here we are, standing in your presence. Shekinah glory come down. Release the fullness of your spirit. Shekinah glory come. Shekinah glory come. Release the your spirit, she kind of glory come, she kind of glory come, release the fullness of your spirit, she kind of glory come, she kind of glory come, release the fullness of your spirit. She kind of glory come, she kind of glory come. When you move, we want more. When you speak, we want more. When you move, we want more. We want the fullness. Oh, when you move, we want more. When you speak, we want more. You move. We want more, we want the fullness, release the fullness of your spirit. Shekinah glory come, Shekinah glory come, release the fullness of your spirit. Shekinah glory come. She kind of glory come. Oh, we wait right here for you. Hallelujah. We wait for you. Soak us in your word today. Soak us in your power. Oh, we wait, we wait here for you, God. We wait, we wait, we wait, we wait for you. We wait. You are worth waiting for. Speak to us, God. Speak to us, God. Set the captives free. Hallelujah. We wait for you. We wait. We wait for that word. Your word is worth waiting for. Your word is worth waiting for. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. You are welcome here in our midst. She kind of glory come, she kind of glory come, release the fullness of your spirit. She kind of glory come, she kind of glory come, hallelujah, mm. hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank you for your presence, Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you this morning for your goodness. We thank you that you are God who is always there with us and for us. We celebrate your works in the lives of the graduates 
We give you praise for your grace upon their lives to have enabled them to go through their season of study. And now, Father, as they begin a new chapter in their lives, we pray that you continue to give them guidance and direction in Jesus' mighty name. May your hand be upon everything that they touch and give them prosperity in the name of Jesus. We now invite you that you may minister to us as we meditate upon your word in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Welcome to E3 Church, to all the E3 family and all those that are joining us online. We are so delighted that you could choose to worship with us this morning. I'm Pastor Lisulo, lead pastor of E3 Church in Columbia, Maryland. And uh, this morning, I'll be bringing the Word of God to us. The past few weeks and months have been quite challenging for the nations around the world, as we all have been responding to the pandemic of COVID-19. And now, we are first here in the United States with another challenge of uh, injustice and uh, social uh, challenges and uh, racial issues. And uh, in the past few days, I've been asking the Lord what he wants us to hear and what word he has for us. And I feel led this morning to begin a new series that we have titled A New Heart, A New Heart. And I believe that in this series, God is going to guide us to make the wise decisions and make the wise steps that will bring unity that is going to help us to move forward. So I'm delighted that uh, you could be here this morning as we kick off our new series, A New Heart, A New Heart. We'll be taking our text from Ezekiel chapter 36 and reading from verse uh, 26. Ezekiel 36, reading from verse 26. I'll be reading from the NLT version. The prophet Ezekiel is speaking and he is really passing on God's promise to his people, the Jews. And in verse 26, the prophetic word says, I will give you a new heart and I will put a new spirit in you. I will take out of your stony, stubborn heart and give you a tender and responsive heart. I will give you a new heart and I will put a new spirit in you. I will take out your stony and stubborn heart and give you a tender and responsive heart. This is a very powerful and timely prophetic word. Because in this verse, the prophet Ezekiel, under the anointing of God, is bringing a prophetic word to God's people. And again, I want you to understand the context that this was a message to God's children, to God's beloved nation, to God's people. And I believe it is a word for us for today. God promises to bring a change in their lives and in their situation. And he says he is going to do two things. He's going to remove the old heart and put in them a new heart. He contrasts two kinds of hearts. The old heart, which is stony, and the new heart, which is of flesh. The old heart, which is stubborn and arrogant, and a new heart, which is obedient to the will and purposes of God. The old heart, which is deceitful and unfaithful, and the new heart, which is faithful 
to the purposes of God. In short, the word that comes to his people is that God was going to remove the evil, stony, hard, stubborn heart and give them a heart of flesh, a heart that is obedient, a heart that honors God. I believe that as we begin this series, it is important for us to understand that in order for us to transition from where we are to where God wants us to be as a nation, it will require not just a change in the things that are happening outward, but it requires a transformation of the heart. So, as we begin our series, I want to tackle the subject today, Matters of the Heart, part one of our series, A New Heart, Matters of the Heart. And in this particular session, I want to look at three things. Why is the heart important? Why does God want to replace the heart to remove the old heart and put a new heart. And then we want to look at what does the Bible mean when it uses the term heart? What is a heart? And then we are going to finally look at how do we guard our hearts so that we become productive, we become a blessing to one another, and we move forward. So let's begin with why is the heart important? The wise man Solomon in Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23, this is what he says, Proverbs 4, 23. He says, guard your heart with all diligence, for out of it is the wellspring of life. Another version says, keep your heart. So it says, guard your heart or keep your heart with all diligence. For out of it springs the issues of life. Why is the heart important? Why does God want to address the matters of the heart in order to transition us to the next phase in life? Three things. Number one, because according to this scripture, watch this, the heart is likened to to a wellspring that is flowing with water. And like a river, when it is flowing with water, wherever the river goes, it impacts the vegetation that is around the river. If it was dry, it turns green because it receives water. So the heart is a wellspring. What does that mean? It means that the things that flow from our heart affect and impact everything in life. It impacts everything in life. Secondly, the heart is like a human heart. Watch this. The human heart is so important to the life of a person. Why? Because the heart pumps blood to every organ and every faculty of the body. If the heart stops beating, blood stops flowing and the person dies. In short, the human heart impacts every other part of our body. In the same manner, the heart that is talked about here, it, it's the source of life. Life flows from the heart. The Bible says, guard your heart with all diligence, for out of it flows all issues of life. So all issues of life come from the heart. Life does not happen to us. Life happens from us. We determine what life is all about. But then 
Thirdly, watch this. This verse also means that the state or condition of the heart determine the state of life. Could it be, beloved, the issues that we are dealing with are matters of the heart. What we are seeing outward is really a reflection of the state of people's heart. So God wants us to transition to a better life. But how is he going to do it? There has to be a change of heart. The heart is the source of life. Whatever happens to the heart, it happens to life. Life comes from within us, not from outside. So what is the heart? He says, guard your heart with all diligence. What is the heart? It is quite interesting as you read the Bible that in many passages, not all passages, but many of the passages, wherever you find the word heart, often it refers to the same as spirit, the heart of man, the spirit of man. For example, look at Ezekiel 11 and verse 19. Here, God says through his prophet, I will give them an undivided heart and put a new spirit in them. I'll give them an undivided heart and put a new spirit. Now watch the next slide. I will remove their heart of stone and give them a heart of flesh. He said he was going to put in a new spirit. And that new spirit is a new heart. So often the term heart also refers to the spirit. So we can as well read Proverbs chapter 4 verse 23. Guard your heart as guard your spirit. For out of your spirit comes all issues of life. All issues of life. Now, if we have to understand the heart, the heart has core conditions. The heart is composed of four main things. And if we understand this, then we will know best how to respond to God's invitation for us to embrace a new heart. Four things that determine the state of the heart. Number one, it is conscious conscious. This is a part of us that helps us to judge between right and wrong. We know whether something is right and wrong where? In our heart. It is in our heart that we make that judgment. That's our conscious. And this is where the Holy Spirit helps us to be sensitive or to be aware to what is right and what is wrong. So we are to guard that part of us, which is our conscience, the part that decides what is right and what is wrong. Because whatever you believe is right or wrong is what you are going to project outside. The second component of the heart is what we call the devotion part of man. The devotion part of man. That part of man, which is devotion, is what makes man committed to something. It makes them loyal to somebody or to something. It is that component of man that makes them be able to commit totally to a particular cause. It is called a devotion. They commit, they devote themselves to something. That devotion, that commitment is a matter of the heart. It's a matter of the heart. So the heart is made of the conscience. It's made of our devotion, the part that commits. But watch this. Thirdly, the heart also has the component of faith. 
that's our belief system and our values okay our belief system and our values did you know that everyone has a belief system everyone has values for instance i believe there is god one god who exists as god the father god the son and god the holy spirit somebody else might believe in other things they i believe that god created the universe there are people that believe within their heart in evolution so everyone has a belief system and that belief system is in the heart so when god says in proverbs 14 guard your heart he simply said guard your belief system guard your values because they determine the issues of life what is in the heart determines what comes out and finally, the fourth component of the heart is what we call intentions, the intent of man. This is the part of man that makes him make decisions. It is the resolve or the purpose of man. Have you ever heard someone say, well, I did this, but really that was not my intention. My intention was this. What, is, what are they saying? They are saying my heart was this. The intent is the heart, the purpose, why we do what we do. So God is saying we are to guard our heart. We are to guard our heart. We are to check why do we do what we do? Why do we say what we say? You see, the Bible says, out of the heart comes life. If we can take a hold of our heart and open to God to give us a new heart, it will change everything that is happening outside. So, thirdly, I want to look at how do we guard our heart? This is the thrust of this verse, Proverbs 4, 26. Guard your heart. It says, keep your heart. How do we guard our heart? I want to answer this in two parts. Firstly, I want us to understand that when the Bible says, guard your heart, to guard is to protect. To guard is to to stand in the way to prevent something from coming in and determine what goes out. Are we together? To determine what goes out. Suggesting to us, catch this, that the heart has doors. Doors that allow things to come into the heart and doors that allow things to go out of the heart. The things that enter the heart determine the state of the heart. And whatever comes out of the heart, it is a reflection of the state of the heart. Proverbs 4.23 again, it says, Guard your heart with all diligence. What does that mean? It means that we need to make sure we are careful with what comes in and what goes out. I believe that there are two or three doors to our heart. Three doors to our heart. Because whatever is in our heart will determine what happens outside. But there are three doors to our heart. And if anything is able to come in, watch this then that very thing is able to go out if there is a door. If love is able to enter the heart, love will go out. If generosity is able to enter the heart, generosity can also go out. If bitterness is able to enter the heart, then bitterness is able to go out. If hatred enters the heart, then like manner, Hatred is able to come out. If injustice enters the heart, it means injustice will come out of the heart. Listen to me. Whatever we allow into our heart 
determines what comes out. So three doors that we need to observe. Number one, number one, it is our words. Words are a door to issues entering our heart. In Numbers chapter 13, we are told a story of how God's people were sent to spy the land. Moses sent 12 spies to spy the land. 10 of them came back and listened to what happened in verse 26 of Numbers 13. 12 of them came back and the 10 did something. Listen to Numbers 13, 26. Now the devoted, now they departed and came back to Moses and Aaron and all the congregation of the children of Israel in the wilderness of Paran at Kadesh. They brought back word to them. They brought back word to them. Listen to me, because I'm getting to the heart of my sermon. They brought back word. The words that we hear determine the state of the heart. They received a negative word from the ten spies, and because of the negative word, watch this, when they received that word, they received it, and it was repeated in their ears. They meditated upon it, and guess what? They now expressed that in their actions. And so what came out was negativity to what God had said, and they failed to enter the promised land. Why? Because they opened the door to a negative word. What we hear is a door to the things that enter our hearts. But secondly, not only words are a door. Sight, the images that we see, determines what goes into our hearts. The images that we see. In the same account in Numbers chapter 13, the Bible records that the ten said, when they came back, they said, we saw the descendants of Anak and we looked like grasshoppers. What did they see? They saw giants. They saw people that would defeat them. Listen to me. What we see in life affects the state of our heart. Could it be, beloved, some of the anger, the bitterness that we are seeing is because of what we have seen. When you see something and you receive it, you repeat it, you meditate upon it, and eventually you express it. If you are able to take a hold of what you see and determine what you receive, what you meditate upon, what you express, then you will guard your heart. So the things, the images that we see, but thirdly, thirdly, I want you to catch this. Because I believe this is what we are dealing with in the United States. It's our experiences. Our experiences, the things that we go through determine the state of the heart. If we went through pain, the likelihood is that pain will come out unless it has been dealt with, unless the heart has changed. If you encountered challenging experiences in your life. That's what will come out of your heart. Our experiences inform our words, our actions, what we do outside. So the state of the heart is determined by the words that we allow into our hearts. 
the things, the images that we see. Isn't it amazing that at one time there was peace and then a number of people saw images and suddenly everything changed. What happened? The things that we see determine the state of our heart. So I want to give you three steps that can help us today to guard our hearts. Because every issue in life starts from the heart. Starts from the heart. If you want a better life, if you want a peaceful life, if you want a life of godliness, it all starts from the heart. It all starts from the heart. Listen to me. It's easy for you to act, to pretend. But over time, we default to the state of our hearts. That's why the wise man says, guard your heart. For out of it, the issues of life come from. So how do we guard our heart? Number one, we need to occasionally examine our words, our deeds, and our attitudes. We need to use our reason to examine are our words, our deeds, and our attitude aligning themselves with the purposes of God. We need to ask ourselves, and it's not about what people say, what people think. It's a matter of the heart. It's inside you. You can say all you want to say but what is the state of your heart what is the state of your heart we need to examine our words our deeds and our attitude and we need to choose the principles of god against the world principles Against the way of life this world is trying to ask us to live. What are the principles of the word of God? The word of God says we are to love one another. We are to forgive one another. Those are the principles of the word of God. So you examine your heart. Am I truly loving my neighbor as I love myself? Or I'm loving myself more than I love my neighbor? It's a state. It's a matter of the heart. Let's take time to examine ourselves. I believe the most important, you know, we can get into meetings and talk, but if we do not examine our hearts, individual hearts, are they aligned with the principles of the word of God? God, who is our creator, will miss the mark. Secondly, we need to allow God to change our heart because God is inviting us to himself. He says, I will remove your stubborn heart. If we are found wanting, we are found in a state where we are wrestling with issues that do not align themselves with the purposes of God. We need to reach out to God and say, Lord, come help us. Change, remove my stony heart and give me a heart of flesh. Ask the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is our helper. The Holy Spirit is there to help us. He says, I will remove the stony heart, the stubborn heart, the deceitful heart, the heart of injustice. Beloved, it's not about changing your action. It's changing the state of your heart. If your heart is not transformed, you will pretend for a season. But when you go to the dark corners, you will revert back to those particular acts because everything that is in the heart is what comes out. Finally, finally, how do we guard our heart? Because out of our heart comes the issues of life. We are to embrace a new belief 
system and the new values. I'm not talking about what you write on paper. I'm talking about your heart. <laughs> your heart. God is after our heart because the heart determines the state of life. Can we embrace the word of God as truth in our hearts? Do we really believe that according to the word of God, man was created in the image of God and we are all equal before God? Whether white, black, yellow, whatever color, whether from Africa, from, from Australia, from New Zealand, from United States of America, from Canada. We are all God's creation. Do we believe we were created all in the image of God? We need to embrace the truth of God's word. And it's where? In our hearts, beloved. In our hearts, our conscience. What do you determine as right about nationality, about languages, about race. In your heart, what do you determine as right? Is that aligned to the word of God? That is what speaks. It's in your heart, matters of the heart. Your devotion, where is your loyalty, your commitment? Your faith, what are you believing as truth? Your intention, what is the motive behind you in what you are doing? Why are you doing what you are doing? When nobody is there, what do you believe? What is in your heart? Because the heart determines life. We need to receive the word of God. We need to repent from our old ways and ask God to forgive us and give us a new heart. We need to meditate on the word of God, the principles of the word of God. We need to ask the spirit of God to help us to receive the word of revelation. You see, the word of God is open to everyone. But the word of God only transforms those that embrace the word and are open to the Holy Spirit to change them. As I close, real quick, as I close, I want you to watch two scriptures I want to read to you and then we pray. Number one, Proverbs 29, 11. It says, a fool vents all his feelings, but a wise man holds them back. A fool vents all his feelings, but a wise man holds them back. Proverbs 16 and 32. Listen to what it says. He who is slow to anger is better than the mighty. And he who rules his spirit, who rules his spirit, than he who captures a city. He who is slow to anger is better than the mighty. And he who rules his spirit is better than one who captures the city. It's not what control that you have. It's how are you able to control your heart? So there are two kinds of people. There are those that do not rule their spirits. What does that mean? It means these are people that are passive. These are people that do not take time to examine their words, their deeds, and their actions, their attitudes. They are just carried away by the wind of life. They believe anything. Just because it's been passed to you from one generation to another, you just believe it. You do not take time to examine whether it aligns itself with the purposes of God, with the principles of the word of God. The second person is a person that rules his spirit. And this is what God is inviting us to. How do you rule your spirit? You go beyond emotional hurt and pain. You take hold of your heart. You examine your life, your words, your deeds, 
your attitudes. You change your belief system, your values, and align them to the values of the word of God. Beloved, life does not happen to us. Life happens from us. We are a reflection of the state of our heart. As we close, I want to pray with you. Life flows from our heart. What is the state of your heart today? What is coming out of your heart? Is it healing? It's not what you say. What actually is the impact of whatever is coming from your heart around you? How are people impacted by your life? Don't let anger control you. The Bible says, be angry, but let not your anger lead you to sin. Why? Because you can rule your heart. You can rule your spirit. You can take hold of it. Surrender it to God and let God transform you and change you. Today, make a prayer. And say, so, Lord, I want peace out of my heart. I want joy out of my heart. Therefore, I embrace the truth of your word. I align my values, my beliefs with your word. I want to speak to somebody. Maybe today you are hearing me for the first time. I know there's a lot that is happening around us and you are wondering how can i bring a change how can change happen to me listen to me life does not happen to you life happens from you we were created to rule to determine the life that is around us and god wants us to get back to our place how is he going to do it by change of heart so the first place is for you to surrender your heart to God. Invite Jesus into your heart. And when you invite him into your heart, he will give you his spirit. And that spirit will save you. I want you to pray after me and say, Lord Jesus, I have heard your word. I surrender my life and my spirit to you. Change me. Make me your child. In Jesus' name. Forgive me of my sins. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Listen to me. If you made that prayer, Jesus has heard you. And lives in you. But I want to quickly pray with everyone. Listen. Just wherever you are, stretch your hands towards God. And say, Lord, search my heart. Search my heart. This is not about guarding somebody else's heart. It's guarding our heart. It's about guarding our heart, keeping our heart. Lord, touch my conscience that I may know that which is right. Father, may I be committed to you and to your will and to your principles in this life. You are my creator. Father, help me have values that honor you, that please you, that are a blessing to my community. Father, remove the heart of stone. Give me the heart of flesh, that my intentions would be good would be aligned to your purposes and to your will in the name of Jesus. Father, I surrender to you. Take away the anger, the bitterness. Maybe somebody is here under the sound of my voice. You are so angry today. And God says, let not your anger lead you to sin. Let not your anger lead you to sin. Ask God to reach out and touch you and bless you. Father, in the name of Jesus, we receive the new spirit. 
We receive the new spirit, the spirit of love, the spirit of peace, the spirit that honors you in the name of Jesus. Heal our land in the name of Jesus. Help us in our decisions to honor you in Jesus' mighty name. We arrest the spirit of anger. We pray for a spirit that will unite us as your creation. Father, we want to move forward. Father, we want to have life. We want to enjoy life. Help us in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Just before we close, I would like us to give to God of our tithe and our offering. And I just want to pray with you as we give this morning. Father, in the name of Jesus, bless, bless every gift that we bring to you. Bless our tithe and our offering. Use it for the extension of your glory. In Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. And amen. God bless you. Remember, life does not happen to you. Life happens from you. God bless you. Thanks for joining us here at E3 Church. Don't forget to follow and subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube pages to catch everything E3 Church this week. Once again, thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next week.